Hi Year 7, welcome back to lesson 2 of your World of Work unit. Today's lesson is called Factors Influencing the Location of Industry. So basically we're going to look at why are some industries located where they are and what are the reasons for that. And to do that we're going to describe and explain factors that influence this distribution of economic activities. So that's in the primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary sectors. Now you remember those four words from the first lesson, so you should remember what those terms mean. So let's have a look at our key terms for today. I'd like you to write them down after you've done your title. So here we go, the first key word raw materials. Now these are natural resources that are used to make things. So it could be trees, uh, that's a big one, uh, coal, oil, gas, all the natural things we find on our planet. There we go, We've got an example there in a picture and this is a, a, a mine or a quarry. Footloose. Now this means industries which are not tied to a location due to natural resources or transport links. For example, banks. Now these can be put anywhere because they don't need areas that have natural resources. So a, a mine can't be put in a town centre because it needs to be in an area that has the natural resources there. But a bank can be anywhere. Subsidies. This is money that is given by a government to help an industry keep down the cost of exports. So farmers get subsidies from the government that um, help them grow more crops for our country. And therefore, we don't have to rely on getting crops from other countries. And productivity. This is how efficiently production inputs such as labour and capital are being used in an economy to produce a given level of output. Basically, it means like how well are our industries working? Are we working efficiently enough so that we are getting the product that we need? OK, so pause this video, guys, and then we move on. Fantastic. Right. So you know what we're going to do now? We're going to do our quiz. We always do these. So just don't have to write out the questions, just write the answers. All right. So I'm going to put them up. I'm going to read them out for you. And then after that, pause the video. So first one. Industries which manufacture goods into products such as car manufacturers, food processing plants, toy assembly plants, builders, etc. are known as what type of industry? So that, I'll give you a hint, links back to your primary, secondary, tertiary or quaternary jobs. So which one do these jobs represent? Question two. Industries which are high tech, research and design, they include hardware and software engineers and pharmaceutical companies. What are these known as? Primary, secondary, tertiary or quaternary? Number three, when machinery begins to do the jobs which once required humans, we call this what? Secondary or mechanisation. Sending goods to another country for sale is known as what? True or false. An increase in disposable income has led to the growth of tertiary industries in the UK. True or false. Primary and secondary industries are low in developing countries as they can import these goods from other countries. Pause the video now. OK, so get your green pens out because we're going to do some checking of our answers. Remember to give yourself a tick if you've got it right and then just correct it 
if you've got it wrong. So then you have those answers correct in front of you. Right, I'm not going to read them out. I'm just going to put them up on the screen. So tick as you go or correct as you go. OK, so we're going to look at what factors influence the location of industry. So we're going to look at this picture, figure two. Now, figure two is the Nissan car assembly factory near Sunderland. Now, Sunderland is in the northeast of England, OK, up near Newcastle. So the northeast of England. So a Nissan car assembly factory. So assembly factory is where they actually put the cars together. So just have a look at this picture. All right. I don't want you to write anything down. OK, but I want you to study this photograph. Really look at it. Look at every corner of this picture. So using this picture, and your own understanding from last lesson as well. Think of three advantages of the site for this factory. So what is really good about this location where the factory is? So look at all around it. Now, if we really have a look here, let's just have a look at an example. What is the relief like of this picture? The relief is the ground, the, the height of the land, the ground. Is it flat? Is it high? Is it steep? And why would that mean that it's a good site for this factory? Now, also, what's over here in the corner? Now, they're not trees. These are houses. So why would houses being there, over there in the picture, be a good thing? for this factory location. OK, so I've given you two hints there. I want you to think of a third as well. So pause this video and give yourself about five minutes. All right, so we're going to have a look now at some answers. So hopefully you've written down some points, uh, three points, and to explain how this area, this location is really good for a, a car assembly factory to be built on. So let's have a look. So get your green pens out and we go through it. So the first one, remember I, I circled this just a minute ago up here. Lots of houses is what we call a, a residential area. OK, and therefore, if you're really close to where people live, you're going to get lots of people to come and work for you because people like living near their work. They don't really want to travel far. So that will attract lots of workers. The next one. So here, this is a main road. Yeah, why would a main road be a good thing to have near your factory? Well, obviously, that means after you've made your products, in this case, all the Nissan cars, you can load them up in those massive uh, lorries that you see cars being on, being delivered on, and then you can drive them around the country or even overseas to sell them. So therefore, it's good for imports and exports, bringing stuff into the factory and then taking stuff out again. And that means it's really easily connected. And also, it's easy for workers to get to. All right. If it didn't have a, a road there or anything, then it, you know, people wouldn't be able to get into, into work. Again, so it's on the edge of a city. And it means if you're further away from a city, it's actually cheaper to build on. OK, so the land is cheaper here. So that means that a large factory can be built as it's not in the middle of a city centre. Again, this is what I mentioned before. The land here is flat. What is good about flat land? Well, you can build on it easily and you've got a lot, a lot of area there to build your factory on. And it's easy to build on. And the last one, look, the, la the land itself, the area here is actually quite large. Therefore, if they need to build more, 
but they can build more onto there in the future. They've got all this space if they want to expand. And also down here, there's a lot of space for parking. And obviously, if they're making cars, where are they going to put the cars after they've made them? They need to have a car park. Right, so there you go. There are some points about why this area, this location, is good for a car factory. So if you see this challenge, this is what you had on the last slide. I don't know if anyone did the challenge. You have to write next to your point, say whether the point is human or a physical factor. Now you can see here that I've put down next to residential and the main road, they are human factors. Edge of the city is human. And then the other two here, the site being large is physical and that the land is flat, that is physical. So we're talking about the geography that affects the issue. So here, this is the geography here is human geography because it affects people. And over here, this is physical geography because it affects the natural environment. So here you can see three different types of industry. We've got figure three that shows arable farming in the southeast of England. Now, arable farming is obviously primary as it uses natural resources from the land. Figure four is Barclays HQ in London. Now, Barclays is a bank. OK, so a bank is actually a tertiary industry. The HQ itself, we would say, is quaternary. But for this instance, we will say that Barclays Bank is a tertiary industry. And figure five is a Volkswagen factory in Slovakia. So we know that factories are secondary as they are manufacturing. OK, so I'm going to read you now some opinions that come from each of the people that work in those industries. So on this one, we see this is an arable crop farmer. So it's a farmer that grows crops for a living. So he works in the primary sector. We're going to read it and then I want you to decide whether this is a footloose industry or not. So thinking back to your uh, key term right at the beginning of the lesson. So what does foot loose mean? So let's read what he has to say. I am a farmer and I have had to think carefully about my location. Physical factors are most important. We need a good climate to grow crops. We need a flat site with good fertile soil so our crops grow. These are our raw materials. We quite like having good transport links nearby to get our goods off to natural ports to be sold further afield. However, this is not a major factor, especially as we have refrigerated lorries to keep things fresh. My farm will always be here due to the physical conditions. I can't simply pack up my stuff and leave. OK, let's listen to what the manager of Barclays Bank in London has to say, keeping in mind that Barclays Bank is a tertiary industry. Physical factors have played no part in our location. We need no raw materials and do not care about the climate. Human factors have influenced us the most. However, unlike secondary indus industries, we are not influenced massively by transport as most things are done electronically. We do like our stores to be in bustling market areas. And London, with over 7 million people, is just that, meaning lots of custom. A good quality labour force is very important to us. They need to be a dynamic and well-educated. We need the government to invest in retail space in areas. The government also offers us tax breaks. We could move our HQ to another country if they stop doing this. Being near other financial institutions is nice as we can headhunt workers. 
However, if things change, we will leave and move to another city. And finally, this is the opinion of the managing director of Volkswagen in Slovakia. So Slovakia is a country here in Europe, and you can see that it is surrounded by many other European countries. For example, Poland, Ukraine, Romania, Hungary, Austria, and Czech Republic. And up here is Germany. So what does he have to say? I am the company director for the Volkswagen factory in Slovakia. Physical factors were important to me when setting up this industry, such as a large flat site, meaning it was very easy to build and we can expand in the future if we need to. However, the main thing which attracted us to this location was the cheap labour costs and hard work ethic of the people. We are located in Central Europe, so have a huge market to sell to. Being in Central Europe also means we can import parts from many neighbouring places. Transport and communication links here are outstanding, meaning finished exports and parts can be moved in and out quickly and effectively. Due to these reasons, we could move, but all factors would have to be right. So, does he think he is footloose or not? Okay, so what we need to do is copy this table into our books or onto our paper using a ruler. And so I suggest pausing this video while you do that. Okay, so what you've got to do with your table is rank each of these points here at the top of your table with how important they are to each of the industries. For example, if we look at the primary industry here, the farming industry, so it's this guy up here, and we look at the first column, it says it needs to be near raw materials. I mean, how important is it for a farmer to be near raw materials? Would you think it was one, most important, or three, least important? Or is it in the middle? Is it number two? What do you think? I think it'll be number one. It's really important for farmers to be near raw materials. Looking back at what the farmer said, here he says he needs to be near fertile soil. If he doesn't have good soil, he can't grow his crops. It's all he also says we need a good climate to grow crops. If he isn't located in a place that has a good climate, he can't grow his crops. So raw materials are really important. The uh, factory owner would be in the middle and the Barclays Bank manager needs to be at the end. It's least important for them to be near raw materials. How do I know that? Well, she says it right here in the first couple of lines. It says physical factors have played no part in our location. We need no raw materials. OK, so I want you to do this for each point here, each column. I want you to go through and read it and decide how important it is for each of these industries. Now, you can go back and listen to me reading it for you or you can uh, just pause this screen and read it from there if you can see it. So each of these opinions give the answers. So you've got to go back and have a look. I'll do one more just to help you. So the next one is climate. How important is climate for each of these industries? Well, look, farmers definitely need a good climate. OK, so once you've done all of that, guys, I'd like you to then Think about how you will do the last one, the footloose ranking. And that basically means what are they more, what number did they get more of? OK, so did they get more of number ones, number twos or number threes? And whatever they got the more of, I'd like you to then write it in the last column. OK, so here are your answers. So you just have to get your um, 
key your green pen sorry guys and then just write it down okay so whatever one you got at the end whatever number you got at the end that shows how foot loose they are and we'll look at that in just a second okay guys so this is the most important activity of this lesson okay so i really 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 want you to focus on this writing i want you to use lots of key terms and lots of chain of reasons so really explain why you have awarded the um, places down here in your table the footloose ranking that you did okay so you're using the table from your for using the information from your table explain why you have awarded the footloose ranking which you have for example I would like you to write okay why you've given primary industry a ranking of three so that means it's not footloose so why isn't primary industry footloose all right so you need to explain for all of them we we'll start off with tertiary then as that came in at number one an explained reason why tertiary industry are the most footloose and explain uh, explanation as to why secondary industries are only partially footloose so why are they in the middle and then lastly why are primary industries not footloose so we're going to look in, at an example in a minute but i want everybody to really focus on this writing and it should take you at least one side of a4 to complete let's have a look so if we have a look at this and then match it with our success criteria i want you to see whether this answer here does meet the success criteria let's have a look in conclusion tertiary industries are the most footloose as they do not require physical factors like raw materials this means they can move whenever they wish human factors are the most important when considering to place tertiary industries like being near other companies secondary industries are only slightly footloose as they require important physical factors such as a large flat site finally primary industries are not footloose they have to be near raw materials for example farming needs fertile land so in the first paragraph they give a point and they develop it second paragraph they give a point and they've not developed it they've not said why tertiary industries like being near other companies for the third paragraph they've given a point but they've not developed it they've not said why and there for the last one they've given a point and they've not said why